and welcome to day two on the Disney Dream. We are in the port of Zeebrugge, but we're staying on board today. First things first, let's get breakfast at Cabana's, the ship's buffet restaurant. visited the rainforest room at Census Spa for the first time. We bought length of stay passes here so we could visit the room during the entire voyage. For our sailing, these passes were $159 per person. Normally we wouldn't film in a dressing room. However, since we were the only people here, we wanted to show you what it's like inside. When the ship is empty, there's tons to do. Tori thought she'd see how her b-ball game was. Hmm, she must have uh, left it back on land. Welcome to day two on the Disney Dream. Uh, we've already had a pretty productive morning. We arrived in uh, Zeebrugge, Belgium, uh, before we woke up this morning. And uh, since we live within driving distance of Belgium, we decided to stay on the ship. So we're gonna explore the ship, have some fun today. So we've already went to Cove Cafe, had some awesome coffee. Um, we went to Cabanas for breakfast. We uh, went to Census Spa, tried out the spa for the first time, had the hot tubs and the stone loungers. Really nice. Um, and then uh, we spent some more time just kind of lounging in the pools. And. Um, yeah, so it's really quiet. It seems like a lot of people are off the ship already, so there's not a lot of people around. Everything's pretty open. Uh, unfortunately, some of the pools and like the aqueduct aren't quite open yet. Hopefully, like around two o'clock they open, so we're gonna try doing that later. Uh, some other things in the schedule we're gonna try, so yeah. Welcome to Zeebrugge. <laughs> During the morning, we heard the crew running emergency drills over the PA system, including a simulated abandoned ship announcement. So we were able to see them taking the lifeboats out for testing. How cool is that? This is the Port Adventures desk on board. This desk would become much busier with many unhappy cruisers later in the week. Mm -hmm. 
We also saw them bringing one of the lifeboats back on board. Let's check in with Mickey. Don't worry, we'll get right on it. Oh boy, am I glad you're here, because we've got one doozy of a case. You just won't believe it, but... <laughs> the paintings are being stolen right here on the ship. <laughs> yeah, Goofy, I know. Are there any suspects? Seven of them. And the ship's really big. Well, I think we're going to need some help. <laughs> no problem. Huh? Check out our new detectives. They're going to help us crack this case. Uh -huh. I just know it. <laughs> detectives, we need to catch that criminal and find those stolen paintings. And that means you're going to have to search all around the ship. The casebook also has a map where witnesses have reported suspicious activity. At each place, you'll find a piece of art. Hold up your badge toward the art and the secret place will be revealed. Search carefully for clues or stolen paintings. Go ahead and pick up your pencil and the casebook with a blue label. Start your search at this location. Go there now. Does it? You've got everything you need to crack this case and find those missing paintings. Good luck! No spoilers here. The badges have different QR codes and give you a different game each time. Maybe there's something behind that panel. I know. Use your power screwdriver to find out. glass around and let's take a closer look. Uh. Wow! According to the newspaper, Cruella's not even on the ship. Great discovery, detectives! This means we can take Cruella off the suspect list. Keep up the good work. Next 
next location to identify the criminal. Okay, you've collected lots of clues. Now who do you think committed the crime? Just pick a photo. Okay, we can check their stateroom. <laughs> That's intrusive, but okay. A painting in the suspect's room. Great deduction. You figured out who committed the crime. And look at the security footage. The criminal's trying to escape. Quick, go to this location on your map and let's catch that criminal. thousand steps while doing it so success all around well we've had a pretty amazing afternoon uh, we after after the spa we went and explored the ship a bit a little bit and uh, we wound up doing the Mickey's midship detective one of those um, we call it like a mystery you walk around to a bunch of different points in the ship and uh, interact with different paintings and solve a mystery. We chose the one about uh, stolen paintings, and so we walked <laughs> all around the ship and we solved we solved the, uh, the mystery. So that was cool. And then we find ourselves back into the adult pool in the Quiet Cove area, and uh, we met some other folks. Um, actually, uh, uh, these two women we met at the Holiday Inn when we were staying there. They were there, and then some other Brits came and hang out with us. So we. Just had a lovely time chatting and, and sitting in the pool, having a good time. Uh, we uh, wound up doing the aqueduct, which is the big water slide on the ship. My back held up. <laughs> Danny's back held up, so we were. It was her first time doing a water slide because when we went to Wish last year, she didn't get to do the uh, the slide on that one. So we did it together on this one. Well, it was a lot of fun. It's a nice, very nice water slide. And uh, then we had some lunch at the pool deck. By the time that time, all of the uh, cabanas and the and the lunch places were closed, so we got some hot dogs and chicken tenders and salads on the pool deck again. It was, it's such a lovely day. It's just nice to sit outside. And uh, yeah, we came back to the room for a little bit. We're just chilling, charging our phones, and we're about to go deliver our fish extender gifts to the different rooms. We have seven rooms to deliver to, so we'll do that in a minute, and I will show you what we got. For our fish extender gifts, we got a fun Disney trivia book and some frozen bandages. Because Norway. We put these in a custom waterproof document bag that Tori made, along with some cruise luggage tag holders. We really hope those in our fish extender group enjoyed the gifts. We found our first duck. This little passport. Is it from? Conquaculations. Keep us, hide, you decide. Place in a public area only. Oh, what luck, you found a duck. It doesn't say who it's from. But it's super cute. I arrest you. <laughs> Quack. All right, we are heading to the Pink Champagne Lounge in the district here for a liquor and chocolate tasting. Woo. Don't know what to expect other than liquor and chocolate, so. Should be good, but we will see. You know I share a copy with them already. What do we think? Um, it looks fancy, and um, the glasses just get smaller, which is cute. But I am not seeing enough chocolate. 
There's little white chocolates here. There's like three pieces of chocolate. I think it's more about the liquor than the chocolate, to be honest. I mean, let's see. Hey, what's that he's bringing out? Okay, things have now gotten up a notch, and now I'm a little bit more excited. Is that, I think that's liquor or chocolate pudding? It's a chocolate liqueur. Oh, it's pudding? like, oh, it's like, uh, it's two colors. It's brown and white together in one cup. Yeah, like chocolate and vanilla. Yeah. Oh, chocolate my chocolate. Yeah. Could be the one. Cho oh, yeah. That's my man. Thank you. By, by the way, I have more than, I think, 500 bottles of wine. Wines from $37 up to take 12 to the sky. Science wines. Wines from 1947 up to 2022. What we'll do for the next 45 minutes? Practically, we'll explore the whole spectrum of wine. We'll do a sparkling, a great rosé champagne. We'll do a red steel blend of New World of Wine. I explain what it's about. We'll have a fortified wine and pour. And we'll end up in style with a great blend of single malt twists. Everything is coming out with chocolate and even with a little cheese. Because I'm sure everybody had a good brunch, lunch. Yeah? We need something to support the alcohol, the tolerance. Of course, we are not drinking today. We are just sipping, tasting, yeah? enhancing more our knowledges. But first of all, before uh, to start, I would like to have a toast with you. From the flute of champagne, save a little for description. And welcome to our chocolate liquor experience. Okay. Cheers. 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 All right. Uh, how drunk are we? <laughs> Not very. I'm right, feeling a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of the chocolate tasting? And the wine, well, mostly liquor tasting, a little bit of chocolate. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely mainly. It was four wines and like a splash of chocolate. So I would have liked more chocolate uh, for sure. Especially because there was white chocolate involved, and I don't like white chocolate, so I was a little sad about that. And I don't like whiskey, so. You drink some whiskey. I drink a it. little bit, but it wasn't really my thing. It was single malt, single malt uh, whiskey. It was really good. Yeah, so it was good for you. Yeah. But I thought the guy, Danny, spelled D-A-N-I, so like Tim Extra, um, I thought he was really knowledgeable, and I thought it was really educational. Yeah. And yeah. enjoyable at the same time. I learned quite a bit about wine stuff too. I kind of the, read the legs in the glass. That was kind of cool. Yeah, that was cool. And uh, the thing I didn't like was the cheese. It was like a really hard, dry cheese, like mm -hmm. the goat cheese. Like it was good for cleaning the palate after the champagne, but it was probably still a little bit too dry and strong for my taste. I didn't love that, but uh, overall, that was really great. So if you're finding yourself in a Disney cruise and you see they have the liquor and chocolate tasting. No one that it's mostly wine, champagne, and a little bit of uh, whiskey, not liquor. So yeah. you know, I'm drinking hard liquor. Yeah. Except for the whiskey. And uh, the chocolate's all different kinds of chocolate. It was really, really good. So it's, I think it's worth it. I forget how much it was. I think it was like 40 or 50 a person, something yeah. like that. But it was definitely worth it um, in terms of like an hour long. But there was one at the same time that was like mojitos. I don't know a lot about mojitos, but like if that's your thing, there's also other options as well. Right. But I think I think that was good for you and I balancing what we like, that we both had enjoyable moments, and we actually did learn something. Yeah. So it was fun. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. How do you recommend? All right. Do it. We have a little bit of time, and then we're gonna do dinner in Enchanted Garden. So we'll see you there. Bye. We went down to the DVC desk and got our gifts for today. Fun little drawstring 
bags. Some mesh pockets on the front. Because you can never have enough drawstring bags in your life. For those new to Disney Cruises, fish extenders are a voluntary pre-arranged gift exchange between staterooms. Typically, you'll sign up through a Facebook group organized for your particular sailing. You then exchange small gifts with each other through a small pouch hung outside your stateroom door. A little gummy fish of some sort. Some uh, candy. A Donald Duck pen. That is very cool. So I'm a Donald Duck fan. That's from Disneyland Paris. Oh, look. A mini Donald Duck Funko. How cute is that? Okay. Oh, is that in minutes? It's a travel dangle from Primark. I just got a couple of these. I got the C3PO and the Chewbacca, but I didn't see the R2D2 one, and they got an R2D2 one. That is amazing. Postcard. This is from Elizabeth Tack, Sapphire Sketch Artist and Illustrator. Okay, so we're not the only one uh, sharing our business, our, our hobbies through our fish extender. That's very cool. And it's a lovely little notepad. Awesome, thank you so much. Little Lego Coco. Lego Coco, yeah. Lego really Coco cute. is really cute. It's adorable. So it's part of the Disney 100. It's really cute. Little Dante. Little Dante with a. Oh, he's got a skeleton, oh, he's got head. A skeleton head. That's so cute. Skeleton head. That's really cute. Very cute. And some snacks. Yeah. Pascal! Who's my favorite? I love Pascal. What is in the back? Disney okay. 100. Card fun, interesting, cool. That's fun. You can get a squishy guy too. Squishy, squishy. And then some fun. Okay, the postcard. I think it's the ones that she illustrates. Oh, those are amazing. Cool. And you also got a nice to do list sketch pad. Yes. Because cool. I have a lot to do, so I like it. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, guys. Tonight's towel animal. It's a penguin, penguin, as Benedict Cumberbatch says. Or penguin. I think it's a penguin. I think it's a penguin too. <clears throat> Alright, so we're wrapping up our day two here on the Disney Dream. After the chocolate and liquor tasting, we had just a little bit of time just to kind of come back and collect ourselves before heading down to Enchanted Garden. So last night we didn't do our normal dining because we were waiting in line for the merch stuff. So we hadn't actually met our servers or any of that kind of stuff. When we uh, booked our cruise online, we had asked for a private table um, for just the two of us. And tonight we found out we didn't get that. But it was okay because we wound up with like a really fun table. <laughs> we uh, There was another lesbian couple there and then uh, mom and her daughter and we just had 
a wonderful time hanging out and chatting and stuff like that. So it wound up being really, really nice. Um, dinner itself overall wasn't wasn't great. I had uh, the prime rib and the lobster ravioli as an appetizer. It was all just kind of okay. Like it wasn't it wasn't great. Um, and Danny didn't like hers at all. Her steak was overcooked, and she just wasn't a fan of her food. So. Unfortunately, that wasn't a win for us. Um, the restaurant itself was really nice, though. The um, the ambiance and the decorations were quite nice. It's a pretty pretty restaurant. Tomorrow night we have Paolo, so we're you know fingers crossed that'll be a better dinner for us. And everybody talks about how good Paolo is, so um, yeah, we have high hopes for that. Um, but yeah, after dinner we came back. Well, we went down. We got a couple more things at the shop. We refilled our popcorn and then came back up here. I think we're just gonna chill tonight. We had thought about going back to the rainforest room, but they were both just pretty tired. We we were, we were up pretty late last night, and we didn't sleep in too late this morning, so I'm uh, probably just going to hang out in the room, maybe watch another movie on TV, and just relax and enjoy the evening. So, uh, um, yeah, so tomorrow is our first sea day of the trip, and then the next day we have Copenhagen, so... Uh, um, today was really nice because we stayed on the ship. Everybody, like the most people went to the, on uh, to the port or got off the ship and went to Zeebrugge. So the ship felt, felt like really empty for most of the day, which was really really nice. Um, I feel like tomorrow probably will not feel so empty because everybody will still be on the ship. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but um, I think we'll find some fun stuff to do tomorrow. And uh, oh, tomorrow morning we have. The royal gathering with the princesses, which is always fun meeting face characters as an adult and not being awkward. I know Danny will appreciate this because every time I meet, she's laughing right now. Every time I meet face characters, I get very awkward. So, yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna call it. Uh, this is the end of this vlog, and we'll pick up with uh, day three tomorrow, and we'll see you there. Join us next time for the first sea day of the cruise. We have an amazing day attending our first baby race, experiencing a broken sports simulator, and enjoying a delicious dinner with a view. See you then!